Ask anybody where the best young players come from and they'll tell you to look in the Bundesliga. The German top flight has long been known as a breeding ground for elite talent, and within it, Borussia Dortmund in particular have established a reputation for making superstars. But back in the early 2000s, the club was in dire straits. The squad was bloated, the club was complacent, and while Bayern's dominance was an inescapable fact of life in German football, Dortmund had ceased to be the biggest club in West Germany, with Leverkusen routinely finishing above them, powered by rising star Michael Ballack. But fast forward to the present day and Dortmund are one of the best-run clubs in the game, somehow staying competitive at the top of the Bundesliga despite constantly losing their best players, and essentially functioning as the Hogwarts of football, plucking special youngsters out of obscurity and turning them into household names. So what exactly is special about Borussia Dortmund and how do they do it? Find out in today's Scout Report. To understand the Dortmund model now, you have to look at the failures of the past. And frankly, the club's fans in the early 2000s had reason to expect long-term success at the Westfalenstadion. They had won titles in 1995, 96 and 2002, as well as a maiden Champions League in 97. But success on the pitch had bred recklessness off it. While Dortmund's 2002 triumph was their 7th national championship, rivals Bayern were on their 17th, and BVB executives thought that they could beat the Bavarians at their own game. Though funds were tight, they splashed a then-record Bundesliga fee of £8 million on Thomas Rosicki in 2001, while paying out big salaries to both attract and keep stars like Christoph Metzelder and Marcio Amoroso. Before long, the wage and transfer bill exceeded the money coming in from tickets, merchandise and TV rights, and by 2004, the club was on the verge of bankruptcy, racking up debts of around £120 million, then much more than they made in a year. But at the height of the crisis, the club made a great decision, appointing Hans-Joachim Watzke as CEO. Watzke had a master's degree in business administration and four years as club treasurer under his belt, and crucially, was willing to make the hard decisions to ensure the survival of the Schwarzgelben. He gathered 450 of Dortmund's investors and told them that without a bailout plan, the team would go bankrupt and be kicked out of the professional leagues. Unsurprisingly, they agreed to sign up to his scheme, and Watzke set about streamlining the club's finances. It was the beginning of the modern Dortmund. Over the next two years, the squad size was slashed from 33 players to 23, with the remaining team members all agreeing to a 20% pay cut to stay on. The Westfalenstadion was sold to a real estate trust with an agreement for Dortmund to buy it back by 2017, and Watzke signed a 16-year naming rights deal on the stadium with insurance company Signa Laduna to guarantee sponsorship income. And BVB even found support from an unlikely source, with Bayern Munich loaning them £1.5 million to settle some short-term bills, money they were able to pay back within months. Most importantly, Dortmund recognised the mistakes which had put them in trouble. Speaking to the Financial Times, COO Carsten Kramer said it was an opportunity to focus on yourself, ask yourself what you stand for, while Watzke was even clearer. We will never again go into debt in the pursuit of sporting success. Now, we only spend what we have earned. While their European rivals competed for expensive older stars with established reputations, Dortmund and other German innovators like Ralf Rangnick saw the opportunity in acquiring younger players, who represented a small risk but carried the potential for huge reward, making the club millions when they moved on to bigger things. In four of the following six campaigns, Dortmund ranked among the three youngest teams in the division, and when they finished 9th in 2007 and 13th in 2008, they were still able to attract visionary coach Jurgen Klopp, who had impressed in getting Mainz promoted to the Bundesliga and had recently been rejected by Bayern Munich in favour of Jurgen Klinsmann. Klopp's heavy metal football was the perfect fit. Keen to furnish the manager with players who would buy into his groundbreaking ideas, Watzke and sporting director Michael Zork bought younger than ever, with the average age of their signings dropping from close to 27 in 2007 to 23, where it has stayed for over a decade since. Klopp won back-to-back -back titles with a team whose average age was just 23.8, and when the club reached the Champions League final in 2013, the squad was full of underrated stars and kids barely out of the academy, with a collective value of only £30 million. And this time success on the pitch bred success off it, as Vatska increased the club's revenue from under £100 million a year before Klopp's arrival to nearly £500 million a year by 2018. Dortmund had finally caught up with Bayern, and they'd done it on their own terms. Of course, simply deciding to sign youngsters wasn't enough for Dortmund, especially as rivals like Leverkusen had a similar plan. It was important to make sure the academy players knew they had a path to the first team, and in Klopp, Tuchel, Boss and Favre, 
BVB made certain to hire managers who would give promising talent opportunities. They also took some of their growing cash reserves and invested heavily in the academy. Situated in the suburb of Brackel, the Borussia Dortmund youth sector houses over 200 players from the age of 9 up, and the sprawling complex of training pitches allows the youngsters to watch every other age group practice, including the senior team. Some players even live on site and attend school there, while Dortmund maintains its connection to the city by putting on summer camps for children. But the club doesn't just focus on players. Coaches and support staff are developed too, with Dortmund often footing the bill for those who wish to take their management badges and allowing them time off work to do so. Former managers in the Dortmund youth system include former Huddersfield boss Jan Sievert, Norwich's Daniel Farker and Schalke's David Wagner, and BVB go out of their way to find new talent for the dugout as well as the pitch. The current coach of the club's under-12s is Englishman Tim Kirk, a former PE teacher who set up a local football school in Bath in 2003. Over time, Kirk was so successful that almost 80 of the school's players went on to join professional clubs, and when Dortmund heard of his work, they invited him to Germany to discuss his methods. He never left, and neither did Michael Zork, who played 500 times for the club before eventually becoming sporting director, and Lars Ricken, who scored for BVB in their 97 Champions League final win over Juventus and now heads up the youth system. Each coach is given the freedom to coach the way they want, in the style they want, meaning that by the time an academy player reaches the first team, they would have played in multiple systems and had to adapt to different requirements. And adaptation is the watchword at Dortmund. You've probably heard of the Footballnaut, the training machine BVB used to hone their players' touch and technique. Balls are fired at a player at up to 100 km an hour, and they have to control it quickly and then pass it through an illuminated slot before receiving another ball. Every youngster is required to visit the football nort once a week, and over a year, this adds up to an extra 5,000 touches of the football. When the Financial Times visited the training ground in 2018, they were told that the two players who had spent most time in the machine were Christian Pulisic and Mario Goetze. And in the 2014 World Cup final, when Goetze controlled an Andre Schürrle pass and volleyed into the corner in one fluid motion to win the tournament, Dortmund staff were confident that they knew where he had learned that skill. Among the other Bundesliga sides, only Hoffenheim have built their own Footballnaut, at the urging of Julian Nagelsmann, and Dortmund's innovations don't end at football. Keen to produce youngsters with the mental abilities to withstand the pressure of professional sport, they consult with the psychology department of Bochum University on how to develop self-confidence and decision-making in their students, and even put on cultural events to see how the players adjust to challenging circumstances, like a play put on for an audience of hundreds in English. Dortmund's refusal to accept the way things have always been done has laid the groundwork for other imaginative teams, like those of the Red Bull Group, to change the way talent is valued, scouted and developed in the game. They set out to change their own methods and ended up changing the whole sport. By focusing on improving youngsters, Dortmund have now made themselves a club those players will flock to. Since 2008-9, only Monaco, Leverkusen and Lyon have seen a higher proportion of their league minutes go to under-23s than Dortmund's 31%, with even Arsenal, famously youthful under Arsene Wenger and now Mikel Arteta, lagging far behind on 26%. And by giving their players every opportunity to develop, BVB ensure that they rarely ever miss with the young players they do sign. According to the FT's analysis, Liverpool have lost close to 100 million euros over the last decade on players they signed before the age of 21 who didn't pan out. Tottenham have wasted roughly 50 million euros. Dortmund, on the other hand, have seen only 1 million euros lost in the same period. Meanwhile, their sales remain exceptionally profitable. Since 2008, only Lille and Lyon have made more in sales of academy products and players signed before they were 21. And while those two teams have won only one league title and two Coupe de France between them in that time, Dortmund have won two titles and two DFB Pokals, as well as reaching the UCL final. Even more frighteningly for their rivals, Dortmund's hit rate seems to be improving. When they sold Ousmane Dembele to Barcelona in 2017, they simply gave more minutes to Christian Pulisic. As it became obvious the American would leave, they built the side around Jadon Sancho. And with Sancho, of course, heavily linked with a move back to the UK, the attack will likely be handed on to Erling Braut Haaland and Giovanni Reiner, at least until they secure their own mega moves. Haaland choosing Dortmund over other super clubs offering bigger wages is a common theme for BVB. Dembele and Sancho both turned down Arsenal to move to Germany, while striker Alexander Isaac, now at Real Sociedad, rejected Real Madrid in 2017 to link up with Thomas Tuchel. This summer, they've once again emerged from a transfer tussle victorious, with Birmingham City's Jude Bellingham spurning Man United in favour of the Schwarzgelben. 
In fact, in the 2019-20 Champions League, of the 15 teams besides Dortmund to make the knockout stage, seven boasted either an ex-Dortmund player in the squad or an ex-Dortmund coach on the bench, from Klopp at Liverpool to Diallo and Tuchel at PSG to Antonio Rudiger at Chelsea. With around 60 academy graduates plying their trade across Europe and a network of former coaches and backroom staff working in the game, the picture is clear. The quickest route to the top goes through Dortmund. So that was our take on how Dortmund reinvented themselves, but who would you like to see us cover on Scout Report next? It could be a manager, a player or a club. Just let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell to never miss a video. We'll see you next time.